Hey guys, so I posted a video earlier, well I didn't post it yet, I made a video earlier about how I was driving an hour to go to the feed store and going to a small independently run grocery store. <coughs> and I know some people are going to think it's crazy to spend an hour out of my day to drive an hour to go get stuff. However, when you start looking at the state of our country right now, I think it's really important that we start taking care of each other and not corporations, but our neighbors and the people who live around us and who are living the way that we're living. Um, let's face it, Jeff Bezos and uh, Bill Gates and all them, they don't care if heating costs go up 40%. You and I care that heating goes up 40%. Uh, they don't care that groceries have gone up. I know we moved. It'll be a year next weekend that we've been in our, our farmhouse. And gas has gone up $1.12 a gallon. I can't get this straight. Uh, groceries are astronomical. I was buying a gallon of milk for $1.79 at Walmart, and now it is $2.99. That's $1.20. And I go through a gallon a week. So that's 52 extra dollars a year if you think about it that way. Plus the gas. Everything else, that's even more money. Um, but back to what I, my whole message with this is that... So the local feed store that I've been driving to gets their grain milled from mill companies in the area. Not uh, corporate mill companies like... Uh, tractor supply does but smaller uh, smaller places smaller independently owned mill companies that of course then are buying from your local farmers the local farmers in the area they're not buying from a big corporate farm in Idaho uh, when you do that you're supporting your local economy so when we talk about supporting your local economy we're talking about buying from your neighbors and so when you buy from your neighbor, your neighbor then buys from, not necessarily you, but then buys from the hardware store that's independently owned, who buys from the grocery store that's independently owned, who buys from the feed store that's independently owned, or, or many of those ways that that works. So because we're buying locally, we're not paying the added increase for shipping things from Idaho. Not that I'm picking on Idaho, I'm just saying there's a lot of corporate farms that way. So we're not paying for that. So I just bought, I pre-ordered some bags of goat feed for my goats. Um, they're a year old, like I said, and I'm keeping them on uh, supplemental grain the first year just because that's what I've heard is the best for them to grow because they're going to be dairy goats. And supplementing them they can easily go through 40 pounds of grain probably in a week. It's not a big deal. Well, for me to do that, Tractor Supply is charging me, what was it, 20, $22 a bag for 40 pounds. I just ordered organic, locally grown, which means it's stuff that my goats are going to be exposed to, any of the... You know, stuff that's in the soil around here, they're going to be used to that. It's already in their system because they're grazing uh, for $13 a bag. That's a $10 a bag savings for me. Not only is it a $10 a bag savings for me, it is a win-win for the feed, feed company. And it's a win-win for the farmer. And it's a win-win for the grain place that's graining and producing this. So there's another locally owned grocery store and they do uh, case sales sometimes. So since I was in the area, it was another like three miles down the road, I went and bought a 15 pound box of bacon. Now, last week I came out and I bought a small package just to try it. And it was a little bit fattier than some of the stuff I normally buy, but it was good bacon. So I came back, so I paid $49 for a 15 pound box of bacon. Now it's all wrapped in one big bag. I'm going to have to take it home and unwrap it and wrap it up in, in pound packages. But if I would have bought that at the store, bacon right now is going $10 a pound. 
I mean, you might be able to get some of the cheap brand, uh, Smithfield, or that is literally sliced so thin you can see through the bacon. And I, I don't know when we started doing this to save money, but the farmers aren't making the money. Um, somebody's making the money. And it's not going to the guys who are chopping up the pig, and it's not going to the guys who are raising the pig. It's not going to the guys who are making the feed to feed the pig. <clears throat> Somebody with a very rich background is getting all this money. And if you're okay with making the billionaires richer and continuing to have inflation and everything driving up the costs, keep buying at your big commercial places. But <clears throat> not me. So you think about it. I bought a couple other things when I was there, like they have Fago pop, which is, I quit drinking pop when we lived on the West Coast. I didn't drink it anymore until I moved back to Michigan, and now I drink my Fago pop. I just, I love Fago. I know it's not good for me, but either is beer, and I still drink that sometimes. So, I got my Fago pop. Uh, I can't get that around my area in the way I want to get it. I want to get it in a 12 pack or an 8 pack. I don't want to buy it can by can for 50 cents. Uh, so I, I went to the store. I paid $110. Whereas I, and I got, let's see, I got chips that I can't buy anywhere else but there. Um, I bought some vanilla wafer cookery cookies because I wanted to make cheesecake bars. Bought some cream cheese, of course. Potato chips, two things of pop, the 15 pound of bacon, a case of green beans, uh, canned green beans. I spent $110 when I would have spent $150 just for the bacon had I gone to Walmart or the Myers store down the road. And because I saved so much money, I was able to tip the guy because the small town stores here at the grocery store, not only do they bag your groceries, but they take it out to your car for you and they load up your car. So I was able to take some of that savings and when I go there, I tip the guy $5 who brings my groceries to my car. $5, I just don't get a Starbucks or I don't get, you know, stop at the gas station, don't get a coffee from there. That $5 just raised his hourly rate $5 an hour. Just me raising his hourly rate, he got a $5 an hour raise because I went to that store and I gave part of what I saved back to him and he obviously is either a college student or a high school kid who's working there on the weekends so think about where you're spending your money stop feeding this corporate greed this Christmas is going to be a great time for everyone to start thinking about what you can do for uh, because the toys and stuff aren't going to be there you're just there's not we, we let's just face it we, life has changed for us and the only way to change it back is to find a way to start supporting each other so and I know that I was listening to I don't know what newscast it was last night on my way home from work and they were talking about how uh, you should donate donate to you know PETA or donate to the Salvation Army or donate to and I'm telling you no I, I no Salvation Army Pull it up and look online. Back last that I knew, the CEO of the Donation Sal Salvation Army made hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. They, they're not, they're paying the, the people that work in those stores minimum wage. They get all their crap for free. They're not paying anything. Maybe some fees that they have to charge to move it from point A to point B. And they're going to pay rent. I'm telling you, don't support these corporate, um, non-profit, community-based programs. If you want to start doing something to help it out, go to your city food bank and donate food. Go to your local church and ask them if they have a fund where they help pay people's electric bill. That's going to be humongous this winter is to help paying people's heating bills. Do what I did when you go someplace, you, when you go out to eat, instead of tipping your waitress, you know, 10%, give her an extra $10. She's the one out there working. She's the one doing the hard work. Tip your beggar like I did. I gave him $5. 
He literally walked my groceries 30 feet and put them in my car. I could have done it, but I gave him extra money to spend on whatever he needs to spend. He's not going to spend that money far, far away. He might order something off Amazon, but start thinking about how to put our resources back into our community. We need to stop sending our money, our time, and our talent to people who don't care about us. And if you live somewhere that's rural, even if you don't live rural, we'll pick Maxine Waters as a prime ex example. Or how about AOC? Or how about, let's find a Republican one who I don't like. Uh, oh, I can't think of his name right now. We can pick any politician. I don't want to pick on just Democrats. Um, it's just I dislike those two immensely, so it's, they're easy to come up with. Uh, they went and became public servants. So when you work in the public sector, the government sector, you don't make as much money, but you have a pension. So that's why a lot of people work there versus chasing the money. Uh, somehow, in government jobs, most of them who've been there within, you don't know, one term, two terms, become millionaires. Billionaires. Uh, I'd like to know how that works when you're making, your gross salary was what, $175,000 a year? And you're living in one of the most expensive areas of the country to live. Washington, D.C. is not cheap. And you have to have a house in back where you were elected. So you have a house there. And trust me, we all talked about Nancy Pelosi's $10,000 refrigerator when she posted that she was locked down for COVID. They don't care about us. If they cared about us, they would be in our communities. They would be here on the streets. They wouldn't be sitting hiding in their house or sneaking around getting their hair done or going to parties or flying to Florida to stay out of voting on a, on a, on a bill in Congress. No, they wouldn't. And they wouldn't have been hiding. True leaders do not hide. You can't tell me that you want to follow somebody that when the going gets tough, they go hide in their basement or they go find some place to do stuff, whatever they want to do. Your leaders are the people who are going out there and doing it. Your leaders are the nurses and the cops and the firefighters who've been working for the last two years under COVID with no vaccines. When everybody else was locked down, shaking in their boots, those people were going to work every single day, dealing with people who had the disease that was scaring us so badly. And now you have got corporate America telling them, get a jab or you lose your job. And that's okay with people? That's okay with you? That you have somebody who worked through the scariest part that we've been through in years and now you're calling them cowards and you're firing them because they've decided after what they've seen and they've seen more than you and I, we were not there on the front line. Where corporate America has decided that we're going to fire them. That is absolutely disgusting and appalling. It is wrong. So if you believe that's us okay, keep doing it. But you know what? Otherwise, the rest of you, you need to start supporting each other in your community. And that means stop supporting corporate America. There are some corporations who do great and you need to get up and you need to tell everybody about those ones. But for the most part... Or not? Where are they donating 0.001% of their income to so it looks good on the wall at Walmart saying, Oh, we made five billion dollars last year and we gave this this high school 250 bucks. Do the math. 250 dollars out of five fifty even five million is pennies. They earn that in the interest of the money sitting in their bank. So yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to ramble on. Uh that was just telling you how much money I saved by going to local and being independent. Have a good day and uh, go find your local people. Go support your local people. Go support your neighbors. All right? Goodbye.